Hi everybody, Rob here from Prior Studios. Uh, welcome to this video, which is going to look at using kind of layered up materials um, and how to change some of the scaling. So if you've bought the procedural material pack, uh, which I created with John from the, the Pixel Lab, um, you'll be able to kind of follow along um, because I'm going to use a couple of materials here just to show you what's going on. So first of all, I've got just this default material setup scene. Uh, and on here I've chosen um, just this rusty cobra material and if I go ahead and start up an interactive render region uh, you'll be able to see what this material looks like in its kind of proper rendered form so let's just let that sort itself out um, I'm leaving the GI and everything on for this just so you can see you know properly what's going on now you may want or you may not want the um, stripes to repeat themselves. So let's just make sure we're using one tile each way. Now what this isn't going to do is change the scaling of the rust. So we can see now we've just got two simple stripes and are actually obscured by the rust patch um, because the rust is so big. Now I think some people might kind of question what's going on because they're thinking hang on I've changed the tiling settings why isn't this noise tiling with it. Uh, and the reason for that is because if we open up that material, let's just bring this in, just give ourselves a bit more space to manoeuvre. Uh, if we turn off the dirt, we can see just our plain material with two stripes. We'll just let that happen. There we go, we've got our two stripes. If we turn back on the dirt, rust, whatever you want to call it, um, you can see that this has a layer colour, which is a noise, and we can go in here and we can change the noise itself which is actually you know there's not much differentiation between the, the orange and the brown of this rust material but we can change that if we want let's knock it down to say 60 percent um, and that's going to change the patterning in the color but it's not going to change the actual kind of the, the parts of the geometry that the, the rust is lying on what we need to do for that is come down and open up let's just close the layer color just to give us a little bit of room open up the layer mask and here we can see this is driven by another noise so if we take this noise and we change this down to let's say about 100% we should get much finer areas of rust now of course you can come in and you can change um, the kind of noise that this is using to drive it or you could use it so uh, layered up with what you could do actually be quite fun is you could use a fusion or layer shader to mix this noise with an ambient occlusion shader so you only get the rust in the kind of the recesses and things and that's quite a, a cool little effect um, which is also I've used that on some of the other materials so really that's all I wanted to show you was how you can kind of change aspects of a single material without having to change the overall material itself so you don't have to control the scaling and size and placement of a particular layer um, by using the tiling because that might affect some of the other areas. For example, if this was a flag and you wanted to have dirt patches, you wouldn't want to have the flag tiling um, to get smaller dirt. You'd be better off coming in and changing the, the, the mask itself. So let's close that one up and just have a quick look at one of the others. Um, in fact, let's do Let's do a, another rusty one. The rusty ones are quite cool, they're quite fun to play with. Uh, so we've got this one here. We'll let this render up just so we can see what it looks like. So this is, again, it's quite similar. Uh, a similar kind of a setup. This is gonna be a layered, this is kind of a car paint uh, material uh, based on a, 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 an old car that I used to have. So it's kind of a almost cherry red, um, but slightly brighter. Um, metallic car paint and if we turn off the layers I can show you how this is built up so the the basic layer is just the colors just the diffuses are red actually looks a little bit over the top here um, because it's just acting on its own and I built this to have layers so after that I've added the flex and uh, if you find that the flex are too intense because they react to your scene lighting and they're a, an add mode layer um, you can turn them down just by using the slider here. So if they're a bit too much for you and you're finding that some of your renders, um, especially the car paints and things, just have these little fireflies. They're not fireflies in your render. They are part of the shader. They're part of the material. You can turn them down with this slider. 
Um, so if I knock this right, right back quite drastically, you should see in the preview render now, you can see they're almost gone. Um, so that's what that's for. And then we've got the shine, which is kind of the clear coat over the top. Uh, and this is where a lot of the realism comes into the, the shader. You get the nice reflections uh, and it starts to, to look like a car paint. And you can see there's a nice kind of fall off towards the edges there. Um, and there's a bit of masking in there just because it's supposed to be an old car paint. But bear in mind, you could take this shine and you could go into the layer mask and you could change these settings just to get a, another clean car paint. And then on top, we've got dirt. So it could be dirt, rust, mud, whatever. Um, you could change the color. And again, we can take this dirt channel and we could change the layer mask. We could open up the noise and we could knock this down to say, let's go for 250. So it's a bit smaller than it was. Um, but still, you know, a substantial amount of rust in that material. So that's still looking pretty grimy, but uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, one thing I would say is if you're going to do this and change the rust setting, I would probably go into the bump channel um, and change them in here as well, because I use this noise, which should be the same noise as is used for the mask. OK, so that's all looking pretty good. Um, the final thing I wanted to say about some of these materials, and that's um, making sure that your bump matches up. So let's take a, a parquet floor material. Uh, we'll pop that on to our preview object. Let it render up. And you'll see that we've got kind of grooves in the, in the wood. Um, and this is all bump based. You could copy that channel into um, displacement if you want um, you know, to, this to be a more severe uh, and, and geometrical based uh, grooves between the planks. Um, but what I want to say was if you take this diffuse layer, uh, which has got the actual wood pattern on it, um, if you change this, so if we were to go into that layer, and let's just take our parquet, which is this one, if we were to change some of these settings, um, so let's just take the global scale for example and just change that to 120, our render the color isn't going to match up to the grooves because it takes the same shader. And you can see here that the grooves aren't quite mating up with where the actual different pieces of wood are. So what you would need to do is the quickest way would just be to take this tile, copy it, go into your bump channel, open up the layer and then paste it in here. Um, so you, you just paste that and let's go uh, paste channel. Now, you would probably want to come in and just grayscale these out like so, uh, just so you get kind of more of the effect you're after. Uh, and it's easier to work with bumps in grayscale, although color does work, uh, is clearer because you're basing on, you know, black being the deepest part and white being the, the, the outermost part. And now you can see that that preview render looks much better. Um, our tiling is different. With the scaling is now much bigger. Um, it doesn't look good because you you wouldn't want to the, the parquet that size but that's one way of dealing with it so let's make that back to a hundred percent let's go back to the reflectance and we'll make the color back to a hundred percent which was that one um, now this one i think is one of those textures where we can just increase the tiling because all of the layers within the material if we open this up again all the layers within the material there are only two but they all match up. They're all using the same shader. There's not one uh, which isn't to do with the wood planks. Um, so now we can see that this render, if we just let it do its business, this is going to come around and we'll find uh, a much tighter, smaller grid. So in a lot of cases, tiling your material will work. Uh, apologies if I call it a texture. It's not a texture. It is a material. Um, and that all looks Fine and dandy. Now the fireflies in this are actually due to the fact that my render setting is set so low here. Um, if I crank it up right to the top, uh, the, that will all clear up, uh, as will the aliasing that you can see. Uh, but I won't because it will take forever to render, especially seeing as I'm screen recording. So that's been a quick look at how you can deal with certain aspects of materials and, and how they work. Um, so if you're finding you want to change just one element of a material, the best way to do it is, again, I'll just find one of those ones with the, the noise over the top. Um, so it could be one of these rusty metal materials. 
let's pop that on here and I'll just go over it again just to kind of make sure it's all easily understood so we've got this rusty beamer so it's a kind of a, a slate grey uh, metallic car paint with a massive patch of rust over the top so if we go into our dirt we can change the noise here if we want but we don't need to it's purely the layer mask so I'm going to take this down to about 50% and we should find that when that renders we get a lovely fine kind of spattering of rusty specks over it again of course you could change the type of of rust patterns uh, let's go for something a bit more spotty this is going to be like it's had acid rain poured over it or anti-acid rain anyway so that looks hideous but you get the idea so that's been a look at materials layering materials and how to use the reflectance channel um, to really kind of control what you're placing where uh, without having to worry about tiling settings. I hope it's been of some use. If you've got any other questions, uh, please go to either my site, email me, um, tweet me at Pariah Rob, um, or talk to the, the or you can email the um, support address at the Pixel Lab, uh, and I'll help you out as soon as I can. Thanks very much. Bye bye.